Learn the proper way to withhold taxes from your railroad retirement annuity. Welcome everyone to another edition of the Railroad Retirement Whiteboard. My name is John McNamara of Highball Advisors and we're going to talk once again another fun subject my taxes, right? Big, big on taxes here. So a uh, big part of railroad's retirement is the annuity. However, once again, you know, Uncle Sam needs his amount of money, wants his money. So we have to figure out how much should we withhold from that railroad retirement annuity. So let's walk through it and we'll give you some ideas on it, right? So railroad retirement is tier one and tier two. I talk about that all the time. Now your tier one portion, okay, is, is, is part of it is a social security equivalent benefit, SSEB. You'll probably see that acronym around. But however, that's only from the age of 62 on is that uh, a Social Security equivalent benefit. All right, now pre-62 uh, is a non-Social Security equivalent benefit, right? That's that portion before 62 portion of Tier 1. And then your Tier 2 portion is always going to be a non-Social Security equivalent benefit, okay? So Tier 2 and NSSEB tier one portion of that. All right. Now that makes up your uh, railroad retirement and how it's classified by the IRS, which is important. And then every January from the uh, RRB, uh, you'll get tax statements. So the form from the will be the RRB 1099, which is for the Social Security equivalent benefit portion of your annuity. And then form RRB 1099 R is for the non-Social Security equivalent benefit and the Tier 2. Okay, there we go. I got to catch my breath. So, you have a lot, of, uh, a lot of income coming in. Now we have to learn how to, uh, you know, withhold some money so uh, we can give it back to the IRS, right? They, they don't want it at the end of the year. They want it uh, uh, right away. So, the Tier 1 portion, right? This, what I'm talking here is the Social Security equivalent benefit portion. Right, the stuff that looks like Social Security is they'll take uh, if you don't send in this form form W4V, they won't take any money out. Here, here's the form right here. Okay, you can Google it and uh, and print it out here. So it's a volunt big word voluntary withholding uh, request. All right, then you, you go to line six of this form. Uh, amount to be withheld, and they have certain percentages here that you can take out. 7, 10, 12, 20, what is it? 22 percent can be withheld, right? So this is where you got to do proper tax planning. Say, okay, how much income do I have? What bracket am I in? What marginal bracket am I going to be in? Uh, and then you want to uh, uh, put that down in your form, okay? Once that form is complete, you send it to the RRB. Don't send it to Social Security. Send it to the RRB, all right? Very important. So that's the Social Security equivalent benefit piece. Next up is the Tier 2 and the non-Social Security equivalent benefit, right? So file the form. Uh, let's see here. The RRB W4P, okay, which is this form here, all right? And uh, it once again it says don't have to file it. You don't have to file it. However, if this portion here is going to exceed $2,047 a month, which it probably most likely is, they're going to withhold it as if you're married with three kids, all right? So you probably want to complete this form, figure out all your allowances, right? Do that and then send that to the RRB. So you got two forms you want to fill out the RRB. Proper tax planning, talk about this all the time. Now I have some warning here, right? Things to look out for, all right? This is where it gets tough. So uh, at 62, you have an issue, right? So if you're at 60, let's say you uh, start 60, 61, you're on railroad retirement. That is all NSSEB, so that's all tax at ordinary income. However, at 62, a portion of that uh, uh, splits off into SSEB, right? Social Security equivalent benefit, all right? They are gonna want that taxed. So you can't go, oh my God, I got all this tier one, which will be a lot of money, and then and not have anything withheld. Well, you can always do that, but you're going to have a big tax payment come tax day, 
And if it's a significant amount of money, you're going to have a tax penalty. So that's the thing. You got to be very careful. You got to uh, file this form W4V on your uh, 62nd birthday there, year there, right? So start that withholding. Okay. And then also, um, it's, it's really the tax payment and penalty. So that's a big part. So this part here gets taxed really as ordinary income, and then this gets taxed at Social Security. But I just want to walk you through the withholding process here. So when you file your um, every year when you get your railroad retirement, I don't want you to get surprised by that big tax bill, definitely around 62. So I hope you found this helpful. Uh, this is kind of stuff that I'll do for my clients, the tax withholding, make sure that they're not overpaying taxes or underpaying, I should really say, is the big thing. Uh, keep an eye on that, all right? So like I said, I hope you found this helpful. Reach out to me if you want, if you're at or near retirement or in retirement and want to go through the boarding for railroad retirement process, really helpful. Tax planning, big part of my practice. Uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Uh, click on the notification bell to uh, get the latest video. Until next time, everyone, please stay safe, stay on track, and take care. So long, everybody. Bye.